I literally dropped to my knees and I started to weep in sorrow over who I was as a person and such a rebel against God and so independent and so egotistical and arrogant. And I didn't understand why God didn't squash me like a bug. Do you need a spiritual spark? Are you feeling run down or run over? Are you ready to eliminate the spiritual ups and downs? This is Fresh Faith in Real Life. Let's restore life in your walk with Christ. We'll dive into our featured guest interviews, biblical devotional thoughts, answers to your questions, and more. Your walk with Christ isn't meant to be a performance. It's all about relationship. Let's get to know Jesus and experience fresh faith in real life. Here's John Fugler. Welcome to our premiere episode. Thank you for trying us out. And here's what's coming up. 47 years as a believer, and he still has a fresh relationship with Jesus. You'll meet this man. You'll learn his secret in our featured interview. We're supposed to have joy at Christmas, right? Joy? But how can we feed the joy in the right way? Is your busyness keeping you from intimacy with Jesus? You'll hear the solution today. And how would you like to win something big? just in time to get your new year off to the right start with Jesus. Well, you can. I'll tell you how you can do that. This is Fresh Faith in Real Life, where we lead you on a path to freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. And you'll meet people who are experiencing fresh faith in real life. Every episode, we've got an interview. Hi, I'm John Fugler. I am a recovering performaholic for Jesus. I'll tell people that. Uh, it has something to do with being a former athlete because we perform a lot. Uh, I'm an author, uh, a podcaster, a Christian radio visionary, a, a ministry leader. I'm also a husband, father, even a grandfather. Got eight grandkids. And most importantly, I want to know Jesus more every day. Uh, Paul said this, it's my favorite verse in Philippians 3.8. He says, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fresh Faith 24-7. We're a movement of believers who are desperate to know Jesus. We lead you on a path to freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. And if you need a spark in your Christian life, if you're stuck, then visit FreshFaith247.com and join our life-changing membership. It's, it's complimentary. Christmas coming up around the corner, getting ready. Okay, we've turned the corner into December. Here we are. And you know what it is? It is, you're saying, well, it was Black Friday. No, it, <laughs> it's uh, Christmas lights time, hanging the Christmas lights. How many love to hang Christmas lights? I don't see any hands. <laughs> and I don't like to do it either. I'm afraid of heights. So I don't do well on Christmas lights. I can climb three steps. And my wife, she has no problem climbing heights. So she, we pull the ladder out and we go higher and higher and she climbs up there and she does it. And I'm ready to get somebody to do that because I don't think she should have to do that anymore. <laughs> or we should have to do that, right? I hold the ladder. I hold it tight. She hasn't fallen yet. And we've got Christmas lights to hang this weekend. I was reading about this company, I guess. It's called the Texas Light Crew. And they put up Christmas lights for people. A uh, unique thing about these guys is that um, they are first responders, over 20 first responders who are the, uh, I guess, employees of Texas Light Crew. And it's getting busy there. They've been, this year, uh, I was reading since the middle of October, they've been they've been busy, busy, busy. And this month is going to be huge. So maybe I need to call the Texas Light Crew and get them to come to North Carolina and put up our Christmas lights. But seriously, I think this may be the last year we do it on our own. It gets more dangerous every year. We always seem to pick the coldest day, don't, don't you? Pick coldest day. I mean, you could be living in, in Southern Florida and all of a sudden you, you get this cold wave that comes through and it's Christmas lights time. Anyway, uh, Christmas and we're going to be talking about joy, as I mentioned earlier, and how to feed the joy. So Christmas isn't this downer as it is in this tense time for people. But I hope that this year your relationship with Jesus will be more intimate 
and it will grow. And we'll be sharing about uh, feeding your joy in a short devotional I have coming up. I do want to let you know that uh, speaking of devotionals, I've got the 21-Day Fresh Faith Experience. I want to give this to you. It's a free download, Renewing Your Walk with Christ. You can get this and then hang on to it and start using it at the first of the year. Or if you want to use it now, I've got a friend who uh, pulled this down and he's using it uh, leading up to Christmas. 21 days, uh, you can, uh, we've got uh, topics like joy is in there as well as faith, uh, prayer, encouragement. And it's a journal too. As you go through the devotional and you center on the word of God, and I ask you some, some deep questions here, you can journal about that and and develop a stronger walk with Jesus. If you need to freshen up your faith, here's the chance to do it, the 21-Day Fresh Faith Experience. How do you get it? You download it. You go to my website, freshfaith247.com. That's freshfaith247.com. And in the menu, you'll see a button that says 21-Day. And you just click that, and you can go ahead and download the 21-day Fresh Faith Experience. Would love to get that out to you and make that available for you as you get ready for the new year, or you can use it now. What is Fresh Faith 24-7? I've mentioned that, and this is a new podcast. Uh, Fresh Faith 24-7 really does this. Um, it, it, it gives you freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. Uh, it's a path to freedom. I call it the freedom path that I take our members on. And your relationship with Jesus Christ will be fed. It will be freshened. And I encourage you to to check it out and find out more at freshfaith247.com. I might add, too, as you hear the website and you heard the the link for the 21-Day Fresh Faith Experience, I'll put these in the show notes. That way you just click on the link in the show notes and you can get to the resources that I'll be sharing here on the program. Joy. Christmas joy. (laughs) Uh, Here we are. Uh, We need to feed our joy because there's a lot of tension that goes around at at Christmas time. So I want to ramp up to this for you. Um, Have you ever met somebody who's constantly happy? I know they're, 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 they're smiling, they're laughing, they're looking on the bright side all the time. And you'd think this person would bring joy to our lives too. But tell you the truth, they often annoy us, don't they? Why is he so happy? Why is she so happy? Uh, But, you know, it could be that they aren't really joyful at all, even though they appear to be. Joy isn't a constant emotional high. We we mistake that, that emotional high for joy, and we expect it to be, too. We beat ourselves up when joy seems to leave us. We even whisper to ourselves that we aren't living up to God's standards because we aren't joyful. But joy is deeper than an emotional high. Uh, The roots of joy run to our soul. Just like a flourishing tree has roots running deep underground, sometimes joy is expressed in peace, other times in contentment or assurance or faith or even a relaxed spirit. We can be joyful with a relaxed spirit. And I encourage you as we move in to this Christmas season that uh, you experience a new kind of joy, one that is, is deep-rooted. And that's why I've, I've chosen today's devotion to really be about that. Um, I personally can easily turn to the things of the world to try to feed my joy. And that doesn't last long. Because my soul has, has an appetite, an insatiable appetite that temporal things can't provide and can't satisfy. God's word feeds our joy. And this is the point I want to get to. Uh, not a surface reading, but immersing ourselves into his holy book. And that takes time. It takes time. Uh, immerse yourself in, into one of these passages I want to share with you of scripture. Jot these down if you can. And then others in the days ahead in this Christmas season, really get into God's word. Start your day, get grounded. These truths will feed your soul. For for instance, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8. The passage starts with, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And in these five verses, verses 4 through 8, if you read all of them, you'll find encouragement. And you'll also receive instruction on how to keep 
godly thoughts in the forefront of your mind. And these thoughts will fill your soul and, and bring joy. So Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8, maybe center on those. And then there's Luke 24. Luke 24 is all about the resurrection of Jesus. Talk about something that should bring us joy. It's a detailed account of his appearance to, to many people and, and their reactions. Luke writes it in a way that, that draws you into the story, makes you feel like you're right there with him and with the other people. So Luke 24, resurrection of Jesus, uh, it will bring you joy. You don't have to wait till the spring to read that. You can read it now, even though we're talking about the birth of Jesus. Uh, John 14, John 14. Uh, looking at verses 1 through 4, Jesus promises disciples that he's going to prepare a place for them in heaven. And the same is true for us. When you read this, let your mind focus on the eternal rather than the, the temporal things here on earth and all around us. And your heart will be lifted up as you meditate on those verses. So John 14, 1 through 4. Uh, so it's Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Luke 24, John 14, 1 through 4. And let me suggest how you approach these passages. First, of course, read the passage. Read it slowly, uh, maybe a couple times. Uh, and then secondly, silently think about it. Think about the passage, the verses, the chapter. See what God brings to your mind. Sit in silence and just invite the Lord to, to lead you and speak to you through his word. Then the third thing, uh, read it out loud whether it's full, boisterous voice or, or a whisper. Read it out loud a few times. There's something that happens when we, when we do that. Uh, it, it helps us approach it from a different perspective, brings it to life. And then, then the last thing, just pray. Pray about whatever comes to mind in response to God's word. So take one of these passages and do that, or one of your favorite passages, uh, and, and digest them and feed your joy. So read the passage, silently think about it, see what God brings to your mind, read it aloud a few times, and then pray whatever comes to mind in response to God's word. This should never become a ritual, this practice. It's a great way to slow down and let the word of God penetrate your heart and feed your joy. Well, coming up, this is an interview that I had a lot of joy doing, and I was pumped afterwards. And it is with Todd Isburner. And he's going to share some things with us that are just perfect to help us in our intimacy with Jesus. We talk about fresh faith. We talk about God's word, reading God's word, ingesting God's word. But how does this play out in someone's life? And what can we learn from another believer who's experiencing fresh faith? So sit back and Whatever you might be doing, <laughs> maybe you're running on the treadmill, maybe you're taking a walk, maybe you're driving to work or picking up the kids, whatever it might be. Listen in to this interview I did recently with Todd Isburner. Then I'll be back afterwards. Going to uh, Remember, we got this big contest. I'll show you how you can, uh, you can win uh, something big, and that'll be after uh, the interview with Todd and a couple other things. But let's go into the interview right now. I love it when we can take the information, the, the, the scripture, and see how it works out in somebody's life for real. And that's uh, what we're going to do on, on this time together in this session. My guest is one who's been a longtime believer, a longtime servant of the Lord. He knows what it means to do things for Jesus, but he also knows what it means to have intimacy with Jesus. Uh, Todd Isburner is my guest. Todd is a longtime career in Christian ministry, Christian media ministry, helping Christian radio stations raise funding for their existence. Uh, throughout the year, and he's been doing that internationally for decades. Also, he's an author. He's got a heart for men's ministry. We're going to dig into that a little bit, but uh, I'll tell you, he's uh, a man that has been a good friend of mine for, for many years and looking forward to what he has to share with us. We're going to take his life apart right here on this show and find out what makes him tick in his relationship with Jesus. So Todd Isburner, are you uh, nervous yet? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not sure that I'm nervous. I'm still pondering the words that you keep using, like long time, decades, <laughs> I've been around a while. <laughs> Thinking, well, man, well how tell old me is that well, guy. Put it all in perspective. How long have you known Jesus? Uh, I have known Jesus. It will be tomorrow for 47 years. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm uh I'm 
overwhelmed at times that it's been that long because there are times where it seems like it's not been that long at all. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a good thing because there's a freshness that comes out of, you know, and the, and an intimacy that comes out of a freshness in a relationship with Jesus. So, so those 47 years, they've all been just a, a trajectory upward the whole time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking back. Oh, wait a minute. No, there's some cliffs and canyons I fell into. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the typical chart that goes up and down. Um, but thankfully, as you look at the chart that goes up and down, I am in a higher place today than I was back when I started. And that again, that's evidence of God's grace and the, the marvelous workings within a person's life. Amen. Amen. And you've been serving the Lord really in Christian ministry for yeah. how, how many years now? Yeah, about as long. Uh, really? I started the, the year I received Jesus. I started in, uh, in ministry. Um, I, it was just one of those things. I, when I came to Christ, it was such a, a Damascus Road conversion. I was turned inside out. Everything changed. And all I knew is that people got to know about Jesus. They got to hear this gospel. And I, I was absolutely intent on doing anything I could, uh, job-wise, career-wise, volunteer-wise, whatever, just to get the word out. And so it turned out just through a series of circumstances, as, you know, as God would arrange things, that I ended up um, working with Christian radio stations. And from that point forward, uh, you know, my ministry and business developed over those, uh, I think I had the company for about 42 or 43 years. Gee. Well, yeah. I'm going to go back. You said Damascus Road experience. Yeah. I can't just pass that over. Tell us about it. We, we well, want to know. Yeah. So I grew up as a really, in a wonderful family, as a good Catholic boy. And I'm so grateful for my Catholic upbringing. Um, in fact, so much so that when I was in the fourth grade, I uh, really thought God had called me to the, what called the vocation of the priesthood. So I, for four years from the fourth grade to the eighth grade, that's all I could think about is becoming a priest. And the main reason was I just, I really wanted to be close to Jesus. And I thought that would be the way to do it. Um, so I was preparing to go to boys school seminary right after uh, grade school. And, but I started to get curious about what I might miss in my high school in my hometown. So as I was talking to the priests and nuns about my plans, I was saying, look, I'm just going to go to my high school for a couple of years. Then I'll go right into the seminary. And they just begged me not to do that, saying, if you do that, you'll never end up as a priest. Well, I went to the, my local high school anyhow. And I have to say they were absolutely right, because midway through my first year of high school, John, I must embarrassingly say this, the furthest thing from my mind was the priesthood. I had, I had discovered girls. I had discovered parties. I had discovered athletics. I had discovered <laughs> you went off the cliff, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I fell off the cliff. I took a left turn, fell off the cliff. And I, I landed down at the bottom of that Canyon where I lived for 10 years outside of a relationship with God. And it wasn't until I was married at a very early age as a very young dad who knew nothing about being a husband. When my wife left the marriage, we'd been married for six years and I was completely devastated. I had no idea um, how that happened or why that happened. I mean, in hindsight, I look back and say, well, you, because you were a bum for a husband, hello. Um, and so during that process of trying to get it all figured out, I, a neighbor of mine introduced me to their pastor. And I ended up on his doorstep one day in tremendous pain and chaos and, and despair. I shared my whole story and felt like I was being victimized in this whole thing. And I, I love what this man of God did. He had, he had such direct, loving courage because he looked me straight in the eye and he said, well, Todd, I, I got to tell you, this, this whole thing is your fault. And I said, my fault? Like, it didn't hear me? You know, this and that and this and that, blaming everything around me. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? Uh, and I said, why don't you tell me how to get my wife back? I said, ah, yeah, I, I can't really do that. I said, well, then I'm thinking, well, what are you good for? You're a pastor. I said, well, what can you do? And a big smile comes on his face. I can tell you how to get right with God. <laughs> okay. It's not what get you right came for. I said, I, yeah, I said, okay. So, I mean, I, I believe in God. I go to church once in a while. I said, I said, all right, hey, give me, I said, just with arrogance, yeah, give me a little spiritual advice, you know? Well, I'm telling you what, he started to share what's called the four spiritual laws. And Mm -hmm. John, I just hit the deck on my knees. It was the power of, of God that met me in the room that day. And I literally dropped to my knees and I started to weep in sorrow over 
who I was as a person and such a rebel against God and so independent and so egotistical and arrogant. And I didn't understand why God didn't squash me like a bug until deep within my spirit, he revealed the beauty and the horror of Calvary. And again, I grew up Catholic and crucifixes. I understood all that in my head, but he took what was in my head, the reality of the sacrifice of Jesus for my sins. And he rammed that into the center of my heart and it opened up the floodgates of, of faith and the reality of what Jesus had done. And then I had tears of just tremendous joy. And I just, I just kept inviting Jesus, come in, take over, come in, take over. And I got up off my knees after that experience. I knew I was a different person. I, I could almost envision in my mind's eye over in the corner, this big four foot heap of terrible junk that God pulled out of me and threw over there and filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I, I just, I was a changed person from that point on. So and, as you look at those 47 years and, you know, celebrating that spiritual birthday, that's cool that I get you to be on this, on this uh, time with us uh, during, right at your birthday. Uh, what is, what's been the most, the season of most intimacy with Jesus during those four years? Can, can you pinpoint, maybe it's you know, right I, now. Well, I'd so badly like to say right now, and there are glimmers of that here and there. <laughs> there are moments of that, certainly. Uh, but I've walked with the Lord for a, a, a long time. And as I look back, I found that, that the, most, the most precious time of intimacy, intimacy was the, the years following what I went through after that divorce, because I just didn't want it. And I, I, I had nothing. I mean, I had nothing, no possessions of any kind whatsoever. I had a little girl. And I spent as much time with her as I could. I was, we were co-parenting. I was with her more than half the time and I was dedicated father, but I was so close to the Lord. I, I would spend uh, many hours uh, in his presence praying and sometimes daily. And, you know, I look back and I, I realize, wow, in the times of the greatest simplicity and sometimes the greatest pain and the greatest need is when we draw closest to our Lord. So I don't pray for bad times and I don't want, you know, that sort of pain and difficulty and challenge. But I do know from my track record uh, that God will invite us in an even deeper way when we go through those things. It's like we have more dependency upon him. Like he is all we have. And that's a really good thing. And I've gone through that, you know, a few other really rough spots in my life. And, uh, you know, you, like, you look back and you say, God, thank you. That was a gift. And, so as you, uh, as you think about those times and, um, you know, that your dependence on the Lord, that, that relationship that becomes more real than at other times, wh what is it that, that draws you to Jesus during these times? What, you know, you, you say you, there's no other choice, but Jesus, yeah. but what, what about him draws you to him? I would say, uh, and I'm going to put this in the words of a friend of mine who was a consultant. And in the, in the, um, the peak of my consulting years, I remember this all the time because it actually applies to our intimacy with Jesus. And I think we come to him either in pain or with vision. Mm -hmm. And when I worked with clients, many of them came to me out of pain and we had some good answers for them. But some came to me with real vision of how can this get better than what it is? It's good now, but how can it get even better? And I find my time, myself these days, more often than not, having a vision of it, knowing it, it can be even better with the Lord, deeper, stronger, um, more real than ever before. And I, I, those are, that's something that caught me by surprise, because mm. typically we come to God out of great need. I mean, how many times in prayer do we find ourselves asking God for things, rather than just quietly listening, worshiping? enjoying his presence, thanking him profusely over and over. And the only thing we ask for is just a, a, a vision of a, of a greater depth of relationship with him. I really love that. That is so cool. That's forward thinking because you're right. When we think about those hard times and we do go close, we either go closer to God or more distant from the Lord during hard times. We, we, we embrace him or we reject him, but times of vision. I love that. Uh, so let me ask you about uh, your time with the Lord, uh, how you cultivate intimacy. I, I think we all have devotions or quiet times that yeah. are different. And yeah. uh, what's it look like for you? How do you do that? You know, I, um, I yeah, I've become, I'm sorry, I'm German. So I'm very routine and regimented in a lot of areas. <laughs> and quiet time is one of them. Uh, just for years, I just have to have some time with the Lord. For me, it's in the morning. First thing, uh, 
you know, get out of bed and grab a cup of coffee or, and just go with my Bible and have a special spot. Uh, what's lovely now is my wife and I will do that together. Mm. Uh, we'll have our, our quiet times individually on occasion, but usually it's, it's together, even though we're individually focused in our relationship with the Lord. But that's just a big, big, big must for me. Uh, I just don't feel like I can approach the day in a very good way without first uh, just spending that time with the Lord. Uh, but there are a few other things along the way, too, because sometimes even quiet times, you know, reading your Bible, say, oh, I've been through that about so 45 even times. In your quiet time there, Todd, what um, what does that look like for you? I mean, yeah. is it yeah. 15 minutes? It's a five minutes in the Bible, five minutes in prayer. If I, I, what, what's that look like? Yes, 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 and yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of you said your routine, so yeah. I'm going to d- drill deep well, on I, that one. So uh, honestly, ordinarily, but I'm in a different season of life. Do I don't have to rush out the door and carry a whole ton of responsibilities and lots of pressure to make all things happen? I'm in a little easier time in my life right now. So it it pretty much turns out to be an hour in the morning where um, reading my Bible, uh, occasionally a devotional uh, along with it. But we just, Wendy and I, my wife, love to go through the Bible in a year. And we just kind of march our way through. So I'll read several chapters of the Bible. And oftentimes I'll journal just a few little things about it. Um, and I'll talk to God about what do you want me to see in this and about you and about me and about life. So I try to make it very intentional as I read God's word where he reveals who he is and what his relationship with his people is all about. So that that's kind of the primary essence. And then even during the time of reading, there'll be prayer or afterwards uh, prayer. Um, that's changed for me a little bit too. Uh, whereas I used to have more of a, okay, the next five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes are on my knees somewhere. On occasion, I do that. But um, I love, can I just digress for just a second? Sure. It'll tie in. Brother Lawrence, practicing the presence of God. Uh, mm-hmm. This is, I think, a 14th century monk, 15th century, something like that. Who, whose job was, uh, was washing dishes, uh, cleaning dirty pans. And he had the most intimate relationship with God you could ever, could ever imagine. He left a little book. Well, he didn't leave a little book behind. A book was compiled, tiny little book, letters of Brother Lawrence to different people that, that you know, wanted to know, how is it that you are so intimate with God? And practicing the presence for him was just being as consciously aware of God's presence as you mm-hmm. can be. So I say all of that, John, because every day, every single day, I say, Lord, will you make me consciously aware of your presence? Bust in any way you'd like, anytime you'd like. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm always in la-la land at all. But during the midst of crazy busyness, um, there is a, there's an awareness that God is in this. And uh, sometimes you'll just pause. I'll pause and I'll, I'll talk to him briefly and move on. I like that uh, because a lot of times we look at this closeness to God as, as an event, you mentioned your quiet time, but how do we take it from being an event to becoming part of our life? Yes. Uh, So that's, that's what you're hitting on there. Yeah. And there's, there's another little something, maybe you've heard of this too. And by the way, I I mean, I do take retreats from time to time, just quiet uh, solitude retreats. I'll go for a couple of days Mm. to a little place uh, that does these up in the woods. And my wife, Wendy does that. And those are always you know, renewing and refreshing to really spend that time completely undistracted by anything else. But there's another little practical tool, and I'm just going to brag on this one. It's called the Pause app. It's from John Eldridge, okay. Wild at Heart Ministries, uh, uh, Random, uh, wait a minute, uh, yeah, Ransomed Heart Ministries. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anybody can go grab this. But John, this little app called Pause, <laughs> it's just, you can literally hit the button on the app. And take one minute and John will carefully, quietly walk you through like one minute of surrendering yourself to the Lord and giving him praise and asking us to be reconnected. I like that. Then there's a five minute version and a 15 minute version. And many times, um, almost every day, usually in the afternoon, I'll hit the pause app. I'll just slow myself down. And it's a great sort of wake up call again to the reality of God at work in your life. So I recommend that to anybody. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, and what I hear here is a uh, there's discipline blended with spontaneity. So yeah. our intimacy with God requires discipline, mm-hmm. but it's also spontaneous. And to get that balance, I think is hard. There are some that say, well, I'm just so busy. I just talk to God on my way to work, or we have these little conversations during the day. I honestly believe we can't live off that. That's like living off snacks all day long. We can't do that. We need to have a meal with the Lord sit down with him. So 
uh, it's that balance. I, um, yeah. I know that you've been in ministry, you said for over, well, 47 years, yeah. really, that uh, you yeah. jumped right into it. You said you, you couldn't stop telling people about Jesus. Right. That's awesome. Um, so you must be part of the Million Mile Club if you've been traveling all around different radio stations <laughs> hey, or hey, what? Hey. Two million miles. Thank you, Mr. Isburner, for being, oh, a two million miler. I think, oh, yeah, well, listen, <laughs> I made you guys rich off the seats that I bought. <laughs> So yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of years in ministry and loved it. Um, it, it was a grind at times, and and I, I'm talking to somebody who knows this. You know this mm-hmm. um, just as well as I do. How um, exhilaratingly exhausting it can be. Oh, I love that exhilarating. Exa- yeah, because yeah. that exhilaration can lead us to think that we're have this great relationship with God because we're yeah. seeing Him do wonderful things mm-hmm. in and through us and around us, and we think, wow, God and I, we have it have it all together here. And then we, it caves in because we don't have that foundation. We rely on those events and the service. Yeah. Tell me how you balanced that all those years. How, mm-hmm. how well did you do it? Uh, you're mm-hmm. serving the Lord and yet you're relating to him. What was your, mm-hmm. what was your habit? I would say it was, it was the, the intentional, um, uh, the, the intentionality uh, every day of making certain that I didn't lose the awareness of God in my life. And so that, that they weren't necessarily disciplines. It was just this, I have to have God in my life and I have to remember who he is and what he's doing, because if I don't, I get into trouble. And so my, my life just illustrated that on the days when I was really just almost panic stricken with, with the overwhelm of too much to do and the craziness and the, the task lists that went on and on and the, and the calls and the emails and the meetings and the pressure and the responsibility, it, it would pile so high uh, that it, it, I mean, it can just burn you out. Mm. And I never want, I heard too many stories of burnout, burnout. I didn't want to be burned out. And I know the only, the only way to counteract that is you have to stay very intentional and very focused on who God is in your life and how connected you are throughout the craziness of the day. And so there, there, there were times where I would just kind of smack myself <laughs> mm-hmm. and go outside, take a few deep breaths and talk to Jesus. And for, for me, the, the, that was the balancing act for me is this just doesn't happen. If you think you can hit an autopilot, you have to put something into it. I think that's partly what Paul meant when he said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And it doesn't mean you're going to do a bunch of good works and try to make all these brownie points and score with God. It said, you're human. And we live in a world that is just yearning to own us in every part of it, constantly pulling at us. So it does take self-discipline, effort, intentionality, and a real awareness that God I want you in the center of my life. I don't want to live life without you. So lately, John, I've been doing a little practice and just gets a little corny and sometimes I forget, but I will, no matter what the task is that I'm doing before I do it, I said, for your glory, Lord, hmm. for your glory. Hmm. And it's just, it's a good reminder, whether it's, you know, raking the yard or, uh, or eating dinner for your glory, Lord. That's good. Well, I just came out from, uh, cutting the, cutting the grass. For your glory, time Lord. here, I should have I should have <laughs> interviewed you first. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> no, the, uh, in the ordinary though, that's that's it. It's it's yeah. the, the holiness becomes uh, invades our life in the things that are ordinary, not just yeah. in church, not just in our time yeah. alone with God, but it, it invades the ordinary because Jesus is there with us. He wants to be in, at the center of it too. So why do we overcomplicate it and make it so religious? Mm. And maybe that's part of our environment and our Christian culture, but I think sometimes we work too hard at it and we get it confused and then it's easy to kind of give up on it rather than just assume that God is wanting to be involved in every aspect of your life. We don't push him out into the cosmos and say, well, you got the whole universe to run. No, he's my universe is his universe. And so when we bring him in, in the very practical ways with that belief and that understanding that he's with us, he's working through us, it doesn't matter how mundane, menial, or pressure packed the task or environment is, there is God with us. Hmm. I want to reveal my t-shirt to uh, the viewers now who are going, the microphone's in the way, what does yeah. a what t-shirt you- say? And this is the right <laughs> time to do it. Um, our habits, your habits decide your future. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. 
decide your habits, decide your future is what it says. But the mm-hmm. thing behind that is your habits decide your future. So decide your habits, your habits decide your future. As we have these habits of our time with God and what we, what we do in that time together, that will uh, play out long-term. So yeah. uh, ties right into that. And, and Fresh Faith 24-7, as we set that up, is a place for you to develop those habits and develop the relationship. Because inside Fresh Faith, inside the membership, we've got uh, video devotionals that you can discipline yourselves to watch and explore those topics further. Some intriguing questions at the end of each one of the devotionals. Uh, I go live on Monday and Thursday mornings to get you started on the right foot, eight to 10 minutes in the word and launching you into the day, or you can watch later at your, at your convenience. It's that discipline time to really ingest, not just content, but to engage with Christ, to engage with Jesus. And that's my goal for you. I say it uh, at Fresh Faith 24 seven, we're a movement of believers desperate to know Jesus as Paul did. He said, I want to know Christ in Philippians 3.10. That was his, that was his purpose in life. So there's content there for you to engage with. There's time of live interaction. Uh, there, there's community, there's accountability. Todd, uh, you uh, said you and Wendy have quiet times together on the mm-hmm. porch and you're, you're there together. But I know for a fact, because you told me Uh-oh. that you guys are having quiet time on the porch and maybe during the time where you're doing your own study, you were, you were secretly writing a book and she didn't <laughs> yeah. even know about it. And she was right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I was. And, uh, uh, so uh-huh. tell me, tell me about that. Come on, confess. Yeah. So I, uh, I just thought a couple summers ago, um, I'm going to write a book. Uh, <laughs> I thought <laughs> how easy or hard is that? I have no idea. So I just, I, I set a goal to write a book by such and such time. I, I came across this, uh, this little uh, sort of video plan on how to write a book in a really simple way in a short amount of time. So I, I decided this on June 15th and I thought by September one, I, I will have written a book. So I literally just sat down one day and I did an outline and the outline is what I've just fleshed out during my writing times. And it's true. Uh, I did it under the radar. Um, she, she had no idea I was doing this. Oftentimes I'd sit on the deck with my computer and I'd be banging away on the keyboard and she said, well, you're busy. And I said, Oh, I got a ton of emails, ton of emails here. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I was dictating when she wasn't around, I would dictate, uh, parts of the book, uh, and just decided, um, I I really, I needed to decide, is this easy or is this hard? And can I do this? So that's one of the reasons why I didn't tell her because if I didn't do it, I didn't want to have to feel like a failure. (laughs) So that's so I finished funny. it. So September one, I, I literally on September 1st, I said, Hey, honey, I wrote a book. Said, what? <laughs> what? So that must've been a like a shock yeah. to her. Why didn't you tell me? What do you write a book about? And I was like, you couldn't believe it, but it was fun. We've had a lot of fun with it. And the book I wrote was a topic that I thought I could write on relatively easily. Right. I didn't want to dive into the depths of some theological position. Like how come bad things happen to good people. That's one book I'd like to write someday. <laughs> I think somebody already wrote it. So I, I picked a topic that's close to my heart that I think with all the years on me, I I could expand on. And that is, it's called what every man needs to know how to master faith, family, fitness, and finances. There it is. You always got to have one on hand. I got to have one. Yeah. It's right here (laughs) on the desk. Yeah. How to master faith, family, fitness, and finances. Those are four cornerstones in a man's life. He's got to build the rest of his life on top of those. And it all starts with faith. So the first chapter is all about faith and having an intimate time with Jesus, how to develop that relationship. I've read the book. It's good. And I would highly recommend it. Um, I would just before our interview, I was going on Amazon. It's there. You can get it uh, Whether you. I've got the Kindle version. I'm a Kindle guy, carry all my books with me. And it's, uh, it's, it's excellent. And it really shares your heart and your story as well. There's the audio uh, version too, for those I don't have time to, the better be you're in radio (laughs) and you better have read it. (laughs) You know, I recorded that thing in my closet because that was the most soundproof, best place to go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love it. And, um, what, what are you hearing back from the book as men have been reading it? Well, I, they love the fact that I kept it very simple and very basic. I had to do that because that's how I roll as a man. They also become very aware that these practical areas of life um, make or break whether or not you view yourself as accomplishing your purpose in life. I was going to use the word successful, but successful is so misunderstood as a word. Mm. 
So I, I talk more about fulfilling your purpose and your role, your, your, your God-given assignment in life. He wired you to be a man for a very specific reason. And this wiring, uh, when paid attention to, will allow us to be the providers and the protectors and the leaders that God has called us to be. But you can't just say, that's who I am, that's what I'm going to do, unless you're doing that in these very practical areas of life. And so we go into very practical things. And in the book, I provide all kinds of extra resources. I wrote in larger font, so it didn't look too intimidating. It's only 150 pages. I've got lots of action items in there with bullet points. I've got some enumerated questions with room to write answers in for those who like the hard copy, because I felt guys have got to have this practical. And that's the feedback I'm getting, man. It's like a, it's like a workbook for me. It's like a guide for me. So that's, that's really been encouraging for me to hear. Hmm. Well, go get it. And uh, that's hold it up again. Once, once yes, more indeed. to the camera, got to get it in there. Cause they're going to write this down. What, what every man needs to know by Todd is burner, go get it on Amazon and, uh, and read it and, and follow what, what Todd is talking about in there. It's good stuff. Now you and Wendy are, have a new venture going because you're a man who likes to have something to do. And I think she's, she's like that too, right? She's a real oh, go-getter. Yeah. We do. We, we, we love to stay on the move with things. So we developed a podcast uh, together as a couple called Your Biggest Breakthrough. And you can find that on our website. You can find it on any um, uh, podcast platform, iTunes. It's on YouTube. Just Google Your Biggest Breakthrough. But it's a, it's a, it's a storytelling podcast. The two of us interview guests. You were our guest just a short while ago. In fact, that podcast is coming out this coming Tuesday. I, mm. I don't know how you want to handle that, but um, you did an awesome job sharing about your personal breakthrough in kind of going from being sort of religious to being intimate with Jesus. And it's really, I mean, it's, it's packed full of, of really good insights. And so every guest we have on shares a story of a breakthrough that they have experienced in their life. And we have them share that by way of encouragement and inspiration and modeling for others who are dealing with similar issues. So um, we'll, you know, breakthroughs could be in the area of a spiritual breakthrough, a financial breakthrough, a, a physical breakthrough, relationship breakthrough, but it's got a whole variety in it. And we just, we love doing it. We really, in fact, I told Wendy today, we were doing another uh, interview today. And, and I said, you know, if, if nobody else listens to this podcast, I, I'd still do it because I love what we're learning from our guests. And these stories are incredible. So there are some dramatic that. stories. I, as I listen, I'm going, Oh, is this, is this person making this up or is this right. for real? People are <laughs> right. going through some tough times yeah. Yeah. and it's just, it's really raw. Mm -hmm. And yet Jesus comes to the rescue. Mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you, there's some, there's some episodes in there that are just mind blowing. Well, they you really know, are. they're good. If you re-listen to your own episodes with, with a guest, which I do, cause like, man, I gotta uh -huh. hear that one again. Cause that really applies. So yeah. yeah thanks now, for pointing that out, John. Now you and Wendy uh, have also, you, you take your biggest breakthrough and I know you're offering, um, you're doing some coaching. She's doing some coaching yeah. because you, you, you sold your company and, and now you're, you're doing some things where your heart is, this is where God's leading to you and your, in your heart, your passions. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that, about your passions that you're pursuing right now. Well, I found that um, men want to be and need to be mentored. I was mentored. I had several mentors throughout my life. I still have mentors. Uh, everybody needs a coach or a mentor of some kind in their life. But in the, in the, in the realm of spirituality, you know, th this is where it's going to pay off the most. And I love mentoring men. And I, I found myself more often than not using my book as curriculum. So uh, I'm literally like taking groups through it in a seven to eight week course. Mm -hmm. I took uh, recently, uh, actually a couple months ago, uh, some college guys through the book because one of the mothers found the book, gave it to her son. He liked it. He said, uh, he contacted me and said, would you want to take us through this? So we did. And, and uh, as we went through it, I was so charged up over college age guys, seeing the lights turn on in all of these areas, especially in respect to what we talked about earlier, having God in the center of all these things, including the practical things like finances and fitness and family relationships so for me, it was very rewarding to, to watch them open up and, and um, not just enjoy it, but start to apply it. And I continue to stay in touch with those guys uh, as individuals and as a group. And wh when you see there is a real life application, that's when you know 
you've got something of value. You've got to, you've got to keep getting it out there. So I'm developing online courses and uh, putting more groups together and also doing some one-on-one and it isn't just for young guys. I had a guy contact me recently, 60 years old and the tech. Boy, that's really old, Todd. (laughs) Sorry Sorry about that. We can joke about that. In other words, he was a youngster, right? Just a young buck, uh, ready to turn the corner into adulthood. And, um, the text simply said, can you help me get closer to God? And can you help me get my marriage back together? Mm. So we did something a little different. We went through a 30 day intensive and I told him, I'll work with you on one condition. You do everything I tell you to do. <laughs> so he wow. said, okay. So for 30 days, we met for an hour each. And I, I, I love investing in men that because I because the payoff is for me too. I, I have to learn more myself as I hold others accountable to what we're mentoring on. How'd that turn out for him? Yeah. He's closer to God and his marriage is better. Now, you know, what he, what he continues to need is more accountability along the way. And don't you find this true in your own life, John, that just as, as soon as you start to drift off as the independent maverick that all of us men think we are, um, we start to lose perspective. What we need around us is other men who are, who are godly and truth-filled and loving, and we'll, they'll have our back. And if you're a man trying to do this on your own, it's not going to work. You've got to have other guys who are invested in you and will help you. And they'll, they'll have your back. No man left behind. That's going to be their amount. You'll be a mm. band of brothers. Mm. So that I'm preaching that one like loud and clear. I, I like been that. part of groups and we've, we've had a group, John, for 35 years, Gee. a group of men. We have a core of 12 guys. We've had about a hundred guys come in and out of that group. And man, any one of us at any time could look the other one straight in the eye and say, Hey, you got to get it together. Or, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? Yeah, there's two things. That's one of them that uh, we can't store up uh, and live off of. And one is accountability. You can't say, well, I was in an accountability group. I was in a Bible study. I was in a men's group a couple of years ago, and I'm I'm good to go now. The second thing is our time with the Lord. We can't uh, spend an hour with God and read the word and everything and say, man, I'm fed and I'm ready to go for the week. Just it doesn't work that way. We can't bank it. It's like we can't bank sleep can't sleep one day for a long time, one night and say, okay, I'm ready for the week. We can't bank it. And those, those two things, the, the time with other believers that we're close with to grow in our faith. And secondly, our time with the Lord, we can't bank those. We need to keep it. That's it. good. That is so good. That's a great illustration. You really can't, you just like, like you said, with food and with sleep, you can't bank those things, store them up and think it's going to last you forever. Yeah. That's very good. Hey, any closing thoughts here for leave uh, our folks with one thing Mm. in intimacy with the Lord? What would that be? Mm. For his glory, for his glory. If you will repeat that uh, in in your own mind and live it out in your life, you cannot help but stay intimate with Jesus. You just can't. And when you invite him in every day and you you literally say, Lord, I surrender to you. It's your agenda, whatever you want to do. You see my plans over here. I got a long list, but Lord, bust in. Um, I invite you, I, I need you to, to, to work through me with an awareness of your presence. Just keep me aware of your presence. And you know what? You, you can't lose intimacy if you continue to reach out in that direction in that way. Boy, there was a lot there, wasn't there? Uh, and I, I want to come out of each of these interviews in our times together with, with one thing. Uh, what's the, the one big point? Todd made many of them, but what is what is a takeaway? I, we want to. I try to keep things simple. We don't want to overload, overwhelm ourselves. But what is one takeaway? Maybe the Lord uh, really laid on your heart one takeaway and thing that you could you could apply. By the way, uh, in our show notes, we'll have resources to some of the things that that Todd talked about, especially that app. Uh, that, that's cool. Um, but the one big point that I got out of this that I'd like to leave you with is be intentional, be intentional. Uh, Todd's words for your glory, Lord, as he goes in and does anything is throughout the day. How do we have that constant thought of God and be intentional intimacy with Jesus doesn't just happen. And you need to be intentional about that. We're all about not performing for Jesus here at fresh faith, 24 seven, And I'm not talking about that, but intentionality, working on a relationship with Jesus, that's what, that's what it'll take if we want to have intimacy with him. So 
So be intentional is what I want to share with you as, as, as a big takeaway from this. Speaking of big, a big contest is underway now this month, and I would love for you to enter to win the Fresh Faith New Year Devotional Collection. Talking about something that will help you as you get into the new year. Uh, we're celebrating the launch of this podcast, Fresh Faith in Real Life, and we're giving you a chance to win a complete library of my devotionals. Plus, the book Corona Season Continues, A Christian Response to the Pandemic. And I'm going to draw a winner on January 1st at noon Eastern time. In the middle of the football games, I will, on Facebook Live, on our Fresh Faith 24-7 Facebook page, I'll draw the winner. So you got, you got, a, you got a whole month to enter here, almost a month. And you're going to get eight books, seven devotionals. Um, Your Life with God, 30 Days of Joy. You heard an excerpt from that earlier in our show. Uh, and then 30 Days of Faith. There's 30 Days of Rest, uh, Courage, Encouragement. I've got one devotional that centers totally on Jesus and the and the character qualities of Jesus, the identity of Jesus. Also, Prayer, 30 Days of Incredible Prayer. Um, I think I mentioned Encouragement, so Encouragement as well. And then Corona Season Continues, A Christian Response to the Pandemic. It's not a devotional, but it does have some uh, devotional exercises, a journal at the end of that. So all these, you'll be set for the year, or you can choose one and give others to friends. But I'll be giving the entire collection away. They're hard copies. It's not a download, but I'll mail them to you. All you got to do is enter to win at freshfaith247.com, and you click contest. So I'm sending you to freshfaith247.com in all of these things we're talking about in the show, and you click on contest, you enter. If you win, I will email you and let you know. If you're not at the at the uh, Facebook Live event when I draw the winner. But that's, uh, that's coming up, uh, and go ahead there and enter that as, as well, okay? So another feature we have on Fresh Faith 24-7 is, is questions from you, our listeners. Since this is our first episode, I have no questions. <laughs> so what I want to do is say, send me a question. Is there something that you heard today in this program that you've got a question about? Is it spurred a question? Do you have a question about um, intimacy with Christ, about relationship with Christ, about performance Christianity, which which was a hang up for me and I'm working through it. It's taken time, lots of time. Is there something you have a question about that? But as you hear something and you have a question, we're like, we'll be featuring questions from listeners in each episode starting in January. So I'm using this month to collect questions from you. So go ahead and do that. You submit your question to me, John, J-O-N, at freshfaith247.com. And I will uh, also put a link in the show notes to my email address, john at freshfaith247.com. Well, that wraps up our premiere episode. Got so many more interviews. I recorded some. I, I can't wait to share these with you. Different aspect each time as we dig into somebody's life and hear how they're experiencing fresh faith. Remember, the one thing we left the interview with Todd today with was this, to be intentional. Be intentional. And that's what we're about here at Fresh Faith 24-7. Uh, if you join us in our free membership, uh, we'll cause you to be intentional in your, in your intimacy with Christ. We push you, we encourage you, lead you. There's so many aspects to this. Got uh, live events, got video devotionals, got the Path to Freedom training in there. So go check it out at freshfaith247.com. And... Uh, with that, I leave you with two words, be intentional. I'll see you on our next episode. Got three episodes in the can right now, and you can access episodes two and three, and then every Wednesday after that, we'll release a new episode. Happy listening. God bless you.